fair to say that I think we would have completely different views on this particular issue. Uh, let me explain. I'm a farmer. Uh, I was uh, uh, very much involved as a plant breeder years ago, so I have a background in agriculture and uh, business. Food crisis. Um, we've just heard that there is a food crisis. Now, I believe that the problem of the food crisis has been caused by the over-subsidising of agriculture to such a degree that people have had cheap food for too long. As you quite rightly said uh, uh, with regard to the situation on the price of food, in actual fact the price of food today is less than it was in the mid-1990s, uh, taking into, into account inflation. So there isn't really a food crisis in the sense that it is ridiculously expensive. Uh, I'm a free marketeer and I believe that agriculture can survive, certainly in the United Kingdom, without, uh, without subsidies. However, we have heard a lot of discussions about whether we should have GMOs, pesticides, and when you talk about pesticides, in actual fact I don't necessarily use very much, very many pesticides, I use fungicides and I use herbicides, uh, but very little pesticides. And, and Mrs. Bryan, you talk about bees. I'm chairman of Cambridge Association Beekeepers. And I can tell you it has nothing whatsoever to do with bees. We've had a particularly cold summer and spring, which has had a dramatic effect on the amount of pollen available. Secondly, there is a thing called the Ebola virus, which is carried by a mite which gets into the hive, and they have to use some type of, believe it or not, a pesticide to get rid of it. Uh, and if they can't use the pesticide, then there are going to be no bees left. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of swings and roundabouts. I worked uh, with great, and watched with great interest the, uh, I hope, the, the increasing amount of GM crops which are going to come onto the market. And the sooner the European Union accepts the fact that GM crops are here to stay, it is my opinion uh, uh, much for the, for the better. You say that uh, there's no evidence that uh, GM crops are particularly beneficial or good or better. If you were to look at, for example, maize, which we don't now don't have to spray with certain insecticides or pesticides because they're genetically modified, it, that's a huge saving on the use of uh, pesticides. Secondly, uh, soya bean production has increased as a result of GM uh, modification. But probably the most interesting phenomenon would be and I know that uh, they're working on it very much in, uh, in uh, Canada, uh, on canola. If we can have a nitrogen-fixing canola, which could then be used as a biofuel, because it would be uh, cheaper, you would use less energy inputs, and then just think of the opportunities for society that uh, that would create. I believe that we have not to take on a Luddite approach. There are three things that can happen. We can either move forward, and I believe with the use of GM crops, we will move forward. We can stand still, and once you start to stand still anyway, you move backwards, or you move backwards. The new legislation that has been proposed on a bill that I put through in the Parliament some time ago on the use of pesticides and, and uh, pesticide control, mm -hmm. uh, and I use the word pesticide because it's the word that everybody uses, but uh, we'll say agrochemical. It is pretty fair to say that if we get rid of all the agrochemicals that are proposed, then food production will drop by varying reports between 25% and 50%. I think probably 50% is a bit high, but even if it drops by 10%, think of the knock-on effect that's going to have within not just the European Union, uh, but right across the world. Because surely, and I am a co-chair of the WTO panel that meets in Geneva, 152 countries there, if we are going to put in place legislation in the European Union, we cannot accept imports coming into the European Union which have been treated with chemicals which we ban within the European Union. And think of the knock-on effect that will have across the world. And I think it would be an absolute disaster. I'll leave you with one last thought. When I was uh, going through the REACH legislation, and for those of you who don't know what REACH is, it's the chemical um, 
bill that went through the Environment Committee, uh, a, an organisation called WWF did a survey in my constituency and they took around about seven or eight families and they checked them, expecting to find their bloodstreams full of agrochemicals, one of which was a farming family. And at no time, at no time, did they find any agrochemicals in their bloodstream. What they did find, of course, was a whole load of household chemicals, non-stick plants, fire retardants, and all these sort of things, but no agrochemicals. And I believe that not only farmers, but the industry itself has done a damn good job. It should be actually congratulated on what it's done. Thank you.